Yo, what's good with y'all? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a car spawner and stuff. So again, this is one of the like different types of videos I do where instead of like making the scripts and doing all that stuff, I'm going to, like it's already, I already made it and stuff ahead of time. I'm going to explain it and break down what everything is, how it works, and basically so how you can do the exact same thing and stuff. Because if I was to like literally type all the scripts, get get everything needed and all that stuff, then it, the video would be like an extra 15 to 20 minutes and if, that's, if that was the case so this is just faster for me and you guys as well but yeah i'll just do a quick demonstration of how it works so this is a car this is what a car menu gui left click menu comes up i choose the car of my choice still talk about my gui skills as i'm a script and a G, gui maker all right uh so i click spawn the car spawns in front of me a few steps in front of me i get in the car by the way just to uh just to put it out there as a disclaimer these three cars i did not make these cars i am not a modeler these are free models all the scripting and all the stuff all the scripting and gui that is what i've made but the cars are not mine just want to clarify that but actually i won't get in that car that, yeah, that, is, yeah. that car is loud that car is loud i'm not gonna get in that car but you guys get the point so the car just spawns wherever like a few steps in front of my player and stuff and yeah so i'll teach you guys how to make this exact thing so yeah, let's get straight into it. All right. Um, the best way to go about it would be to go down. I guess we'll go down the list. Start with remote events. Okay. So, depending on how many cars you have, will depend on how much more work you're doing. If you have, if you're just doing this one car, this will be less. This will be more easier for you. But for each car, I recommend having a spawn car one event, but a spawn car event for that car and stuff. Again, you guys can do this differently. This is just how I'm showing it for the video and showing you guys my method for making a car spawner. So I have three cars, as you guys can see, available to choose to spawn. And then I have a clear cars event, which, of course, would clear all cars. So what you guys could do is, um, mm, it depends how many cars you're using. But yeah, so let's say you're using one car, then just make spawn car one event. If you're using two, spawn car one event and spawn car two event. But everyone needs to have a spawn car and a clear car event. So once you've done that, Remember, just go over to replicated storage, add a remote event, name it, and then you're done. Then let's go over to service script service. Uh, leader stats. The literal only leader stat I needed was a card checker, and this is so that it's to, to make sure that like if a player has already spawned a card, it won't spawn another card. So then the player could just spam spawning cars. Instead, if they already have a card, then it'll delete the previous card they had. So yeah, that's literally it. So you would just, I'll just stay on the screen just for a few seconds so you guys can have time to copy this. Remember to insert a server script in a server script service. You would do game to players that player added connect function player, make a variable card checker, and since not new, this will create a number value which is parented, which is a child to the player, and then we would name it card checker and set its value to zero. You could also do this with a bool value and just set it to false, but I just did, I just did zero. So yeah. And then now for the main script, the spawn car script. I know this looks like a lot, but keep in mind, guys, it's literally, there's only really three sets of lines of script you have to do. And then from there, it's just copying and changing the name to the cars. I know it looks like a lot, but it's really not. First off, you need your variables, okay? You need your you need your spawn car event. So obviously do local spawn car event and get it from replicated storage. Then you need your actual car model, which... You could either, you could keep it in replicator storage or server storage, it's up to you, but I just kept it in server storage. And then you would get the name of the car and stuff like that. And then you would put game dot server storage or replicator storage depending on where you put it, dot car, and then you know the name of the car. And then you would get the clear car event as well from replicated storage. So basically how this works is basically when a player clicks the spawn button on the GUI menu, it fires the a remote event on the server which it'll get the player's character by doing spawn car event dot on server event connect function player this is the player who clicked spawn it will then create a variable called character which will search the workspace to find the player who clicked the spawn button inside of the workspace to get their character then it will since they click the spawn car one button it will clone car one make sure you do clone and you don't get it from server storage you have to clone the car or else it'll just take that one car and then it'll just be gone you need to clone it then we set the clones parent to game that workspace then you want to name the car player.name 
and then whatever the name of the car is. This is so that it's an identifier so that you know the type of car as well as who it belongs to so that you're able to then delete a car if a player is trying to spawn one car if they already have another car spawned if that makes sense. Basically to prevent them from spawning more than one car at a time. And then you want to set the car checker value to one so that the game knows that okay if they had zero if the value was set to zero they have no car spawned. If it's set to one then they have a car spawn. Then you're going to set the primary part to car common clone. You will set it to the drive seat. Um, all car models are different. Well, for the for the most part, car models are different and stuff. But you should, but they all should have like a drive seat under the group thing. So you guys could just do that. But just change the name to fit whatever the model actually has. And then then you would do you would set the clone's primary part C frame to character to human rule part dot C frame. Remember, some of this will not autofill, so you're gonna have to type this out like as shown in the video. Then you're gonna you're gonna want to do the C frame of the human and root part times C frame that new uh, minus <clears throat> excuse me negative one negative one negative twenty. You guys could actually just do zero zero, but for this I just did negative one and stuff. Negative twenty basically is spawning the car in front of you rather than obviously on top of you because no one wants a car spawn on top of them. And then as you can see, it's these two is literally the exact same thing as this one, just ch just the names are different. So yeah, you guys just do that and stuff. And yeah, I think that's enough time for you guys to do that. Then for the second thing, this is the clear car event. This is, is what will clear the car. So when a player, so when a player, um. When a player clicks on the spawn button, you guys will see what I'm talking about when I open up the script in the GUI. But when a player clicks the spawn button, basically, um, it'll fire it'll fire two events, depending on the player's card trigger value. If their card trigger value is at one, it'll spawn whatever card they're trying to spawn, as well as it'll delete the current car that they have spawned. So if their value, let's say the value is set to one. Which pretty much means they have um, car number one spawned. It'll then search the workspace for the the player's name and then car one, and then uh, you guys can see this the uh, G's and stuff. You well you can't see it from here, but when you go in game and then you get in the car, uh, the script for the car automatically like puts. Uh, the GUI for like you know like the speedometer and like the car GUI stuff and interface and stuff into your player's GUI you want to be able to delete that so that it doesn't glitch and like your you despawn a car be at the GUI still on your screen and then it just like overlaps with another GUI or it's just stuck and the player can't remove it so this is this all depends on whatever the uh, car has because you can see this like the first one I know this looks like a lot I know it looks like a lot guys here mm. I'll I'll give it a, I'll put a space in between it so you guys can like tell you guys kind of tell the difference to kind of make it like look more separated. Kind of look kind of uh, bundled up, but yeah. So basically, you guys need to pay attention to what's actually inside of the car. Like, so I'm doing if player dot player GUI. If it finds the speedo GUI, which is the speedometer, then it will destroy the GUI. If it finds the chassis GUI, I think I said that right, then it'll destroy it. Then the screen GUI will destroy, and then G's. The reason I use a four or four loop is because there's like seven of these of these GUIs all named G. So that's why I use the four loop and stuff. But yeah, it all depends on what is inside of the car and what GUIs produce are produced from the car. And if you if you're not sure about which GUIs are produced from the car, simply what you do is click play. You would get inside the car, and then after you get inside the car, you would go over to players, the drop down arrow, but for players. You would go to your player, then you would open it up, and then you'd see player GUI, open player GUI, and then you would just literally you would just take note of all GUIs it has that aren't like GUIs that are automatically like you start with. Either you GUIs you made or GUIs that are default by Roblox and stuff. So yeah. But as you can see it depends on the car. Like you see car one has like a lot longer script than like car two and then car three has a shorter script than car three and stuff. Pretty much, it's destroying the car and destroying the player's GUI, so that it removes the player's. Remember, you're not destroying all of the player's GUI; just the GUI from whatever car is being destroyed. That's all you're removing. I uh, hope I explained that well and stuff. I'm not sure if I'm if that was confusing or anything. As always, you guys can ask questions in the description. As always. I mean, that description, the comments, as always. But yeah, we're about 10 minutes in. But yeah, we're almost done for the most part. I think that was enough time for you guys. But as always, I'll leave the script in the description. So. 
if you're just here for the explanation and everything yeah and then yeah we have the cars and server storage um and then here we have our card choose your gui and then this is the script i have for the open car menu it's pretty simple just a local script inside of a car menu button i have the so the way i did this i have the car uh choose a gui i have it enabled and i just have the frame where you actually choose a car set to invisible like not visible i should say so yeah but the button for opening a car menu is visible so when a player clicks on it it will then enable not enable it will then make the cartridge of frame visible for the player but only for that player specifically since it's a local script then we go to the cartridge of frame and then i'll make it visible so you guys can kind of understand what's going on here so for the close shot button literally just does the opposite of what the other script does it just makes the cartridge frame not visible anymore well i'll stay on this a little longer in case anyone needs it stuff but yeah that's all it does then for the spawn car buttons here for the spawn car web button th this button right here here's what it does pretty much it's still it's still pretty simple so i get the car i'm spawning's event so this is the car one button so spawn car one event from replicated storage i get the local player and then i get the clear car event so pretty much if a player if player will one it disables the cartridge of frames not disables sorry about that it makes the cartridge of frame not visible anymore and then it sets the car checker value not sets it checks the car checkers value and sees if it's either greater greater or equal to one there's no reason why with this script it should be greater than one but just in case like it glitches or something you just it's kind of a precaution depending on how your script is but yeah and then so if it's greater or equal to one meaning a player already has a car spawned then it will fire the clear car event which would delete whatever car they had before as well as the old GUI and then after doing the clear car event it would then do the spark car one event which is pretty much it'll destroy the GUI destroy the previously own previously spawned car and then spawn the new car and stuff in that direct order that's how you want to write it in this order but yeah all the other ones are literally the exact same script just named differently like literally they're just named differently just spawn car 2 then spawn car 3 so yeah Remember, these are local scripts. You're using remote events to um, actually spawn the car on the server side. And yeah, that's it. Uh, the video well, was 12 minutes. Um, I think that was as short as I can make it, honestly, and stuff. Kind of this video would be kind of long and stuff. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful as always and stuff. I know you guys are probably going to have questions. I'm not sure if I explained that good enough. But yeah, as always, you guys can ask questions in the uh, comments and I will respond and try to help you to the best of my ability. I will leave all scripts in the des in the description of the video. I'll leave um I mean yeah, I'll just leave everything. The leader stats, the spawn car, um then open car yeah, yeah. I'll leave all that and then but I'll only do like the close close open and spawn car one button script since obviously you could just copy paste it and just change the name and stuff. So yeah. And stuff yeah. I hope this video was helpful. Subscribe if it was. Leave a like and stuff. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know. Um, I had this Roblox group for like a few years and stuff. I just never used and stuff. I just changed the name. I actually changed it to the wrong name. I'm planning on changing it to No Cap to No Cap Projects in the future and stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it linked in the description and have it um, what's it called? And the comment if y'all trying to join and stuff like that. But yeah, appreciate the support. And yeah, I'll see y'all later.